Picking up where we left off from our last exciting episode, let's take a look at the newly released Alco PA from Rapido Trains. And as we see as I turn this box around, this particular locomotive is done in the very famous D&H Lightning Stripe paint scheme, which is a dark Lake Champlain blue as it's called, with silver, and of course the gold and or yellow accent stripe. If this paint scheme looks like it was at least in part influenced by the Santa Fe, you're not off. In fact, you're right on. The DNH acquired these used from the Santa Fe to utilize on their passenger train services, finally getting rid of the aging RS2s with steam generators that were being utilized to haul these trains, less than glamorous to put it mildly. Like most Rapido products, this particular locomotive comes in a very thick box with very thick foam padding, and is very traditional in that sense. Upon getting the box open, we're immediately greeted by the manual, which mimics that of the real thing, and also contains plenty of comical jokes, and is extremely detailed. We also get a comprehensive and very highly detailed exploded parts diagram, showing us where all the different components go in this particular locomotive. This parts diagram itself gives away the level of detailing we're about to experience from this particular model. The well package locomotive lies beneath this thin piece of foam. Removing it reveals the engine itself fully cocooned. As with most Rapido locomotives, the slit cut in the top of the foam contains a small parts slash detailing bag, which in this case contains a small ladder belonging somewhere in the locomotive itself. Exactly where I never actually figured out. To extract the locomotive from the foam cradle, I simply slip my fingers between the cocoon and the cradle and gently lift up on it until it clears the foam cradle. Next, to get the locomotive out of the cocoon itself, I slide the outer plastic casing off the cocoon to reveal the flap on the top of the cocoon, which is covered by a piece of styrofoam. To open the cocoon, we lift up on the slat, giving us access to the locomotive itself. And my god, look at this thing, it's beautiful! For the sake of having my viewers avoid passing out from, shall we say, too many good vibes, and or possibly leading to this video being flagged as being triple X content, let's move on with this review. We'll start at the back of the locomotive. As you can see, the truck itself is a work of art, very well detailed and very realistically cast in plastic to replicate that of what was on the real Alco PAs. A noticeable and very nice touch is the traction motor cable hooked to the center axle, as seen above. In addition to the traction motor cable, note the brake cylinders, as well as the actual brake shoes, which are all in their proper locations and very well carved out of the plastic and carefully molded into the assembly. The bright, flashy silver really sets this part off, like it did on the actual real-life Alco PAs. Turning our attention to the nose and or schnoz, if you will, of this locomotive, we see the detail that Rapido promoted greatly in its production and or design of this particular locomotive, where Rapido went to the extreme of 3D scanning a real-life surviving Alco PA, specifically Doran McCormick's Nickel Freight Road number 190, to get the nose dimensions just right for this particular locomotive model. We also note the cab rooftop mounted projecting headlight, rooftop mounted grab irons, and windshield wipers are all in place. Another nice touch often omitted from other model manufacturers of this locomotive are the grab irons going down the actual nose itself. It's hard to tell at least at first glance as to whether or not this model lived up to all the hype of the 3D scanning done to get the dimensions just right etc. However we will compare this Rapido model with another model from a different manufacturer to see if it makes a difference. Well, what is undeniable is that the nose looks good, and the paint particularly sets it off nicely. Looking carefully through the cab windows at the cab itself, we see Rapido has kept up its obsessive compulsive detailing. Even from these rough images, one can easily make out the control stand and basic controls inside the locomotive. We also note the trim above the cab and the grill work behind the cab is painted the proper silver color, and often omitted detail by other manufacturers. Continuing along the side of the locomotive, we see the silver paint really sets this engine off with its glossy appearance. 
accented nicely by the blue and yellow stripes which don't bleed into each other. The rear of the locomotive has the obligatory detailing from Rapido with the Mewing cables and diaphragm in place, although it's important to note the diaphragm doesn't actually function, an interesting omission by the company. Moving on to the nose of the locomotive, the very front of the nose, we see that it has both headlights in place and both do function. The top even features a Mars light, which can be triggered by pressing function key 6 on your controller. The bottom light is controlled by zero. Continuing along on the roof, we see the ducting is in place, including the steam generator hatch, the exhaust fan, as well as the bell. And here's another shot of the nose, really showing off the vibrancy of the colors, including the little DNH shield right below the lower headlight. Projecting number boards on either side of the nose are a nice touch, which are also fully functional. I believe they are operated by function 11, allowing you to change the classification light color. A view from the side of the cab shows off the ladder, which is also very nicely detailed and painted. Another very nice and very much appreciated touch is the easily legible Alco Builders Plate. Going further along the side of the locomotive, we can also make out the fuel filler located on the base. Moving further back along the side of the locomotive, we can also see the water filler for the steam generator. Now let's compare this locomotive to what I at least consider its closest competition, the Walther's mainline Alco PA, located on the left of the screen while the Rapido model is located on the right of the screen. In this case, a replica of number 17 instead of number 16 as the Rapido is. As you can see, the nose does definitely have a different profile in this particular locomotive. It lacks the grip irons going all the way up to the top of the nose, and it also appears to be a different shape, slightly shorter and a little stubbier or fatter in the middle, if you will. The horns are also different, the Rapido containing more chines, which apparently is realistic for this particular model. The Walther's model, as we see, also lacks the windshield top grab irons. Moving further along the top, we see another difference. The smokestack is different on both models. While the Rapido's is much lower profile, the Walther's is actually taller. Next, we move on to the exhaust fans, which seem to be done very similarly, although the Rapido's apparently has the proper cross bracing on it, as opposed to the Walther's, which doesn't. Looking at the engine side to side, we can clearly see the difference in the profiles, specifically the famous projecting number boards on either side of the nose on the Walters, which stick out more than they should. We also note the differences in the headlights. The one on the Walters is more recessed, while the one on the Rapido sticks out more. The top headlight is also different too, as we see the double projecting bulbs protruding out of the Rapido model, while there's only a single bulb on the Walters model. Again, the double projecting bulbs of the Rapido are correct. Along the sides, both engines have a similarly glossy effect to the paint, but I honestly think the Walters looks a little bit brighter in some regards. Moving toward the rear of the locomotives, there are again noticeable differences. Note that the Rapido locomotive we also note the fact that the Rapido diaphragm does not actually function, Walters as mentioned does. before, while the Walters does. Another thing to notice is the steam generator hatches on both models. The 16 and 17 are both different in this regard. Again, the 16 being the Rapido and the 17 being the Walters. The fans are also notably different. Up front by the noses, again, the noses definitely do differ drastically, specifically the Rapido with its different shape and grab irons. Another notable difference between the Walters and Rapido models is that the Walters is noticeably heavier, while the Rapido is disappointingly very light and feels distinctly cheaply put together, especially when compared with the heft and weight that the Walters possesses. Now let's go over the various sound and light functions this locomotive possesses. We'll start with the startup, which is function 8. And that Alco 244 16 cylinder prime mover sounds incredible. Definitely well worth the effort Rapido had to go through, which was quite extreme, to get a recording of this sound. 
Another interesting notation about this locomotive is that it was supposed to be one of the first locomotives from Rapido to feature their new TCS sound system. However, due to some logistical issues, apparently in part caused by the events of 2020, this particular locomotive retains the ESU Loc sound system instead. Another nice little touch is that the upper number board is in fact lit. Now let's move on to function one, which is the bell. Next, function two, the horn. Function three, which should be a coupler clank, but I had trouble getting it to work. Function 4 also failed to respond. Function 5, however, which was the railroad crossing horn sequence, did function. Function 6, which switches on the top headlight slash Mars light. Function 7, I believe, manually triggers the compressor. Function 8 is the startup shutdown sequence. Again, very nicely done by Rapido. Function 9, which I believe is the drive hold. Function 0, which activates the main headlights. Function 11, which changes the color of the classification lights. And function 12, which activates the steam generator. These features are well appreciated. One feature that apparently bit the dust because of them was the backlit instrument panel in the cab, which is no longer well backlit as we can see by this image. Another nice little touch by Rapido are the side lit number boards on either side of the locomotive. Now let's take this baby for a spin and see how she does. As we can see, the Rapido Alcopier looks and sounds great as it crawls at low speeds. Again, no settings were changed on the included Loc Sound decoder. It's as factory as you would get it from when you take it out of the box. To test this locomotive's pulling ability, I'm going to be using a short string of Atherin Blue Box coaches, in this case, in Amtrak Heritage paint and Amtrak Heritage design. These are actually fully appropriate as the DNH when they were subcontracted to run the Adirondack service, used these very same coaches with their particular locomotives, even repainting one at one point. Much to the dismay of Amtrak, who did not authorize this to happen, apparently, and promptly restored the original colors to the coach on its next service.
As a precaution, I decided to test the whole train I'd put together with the Rapido locomotive on the second track of my layout, not the outer one. F3 to put the other light on. Perhaps this was foolish of me, but I began to think this locomotive was going to perform quite well. But then... Oh, what the hell again? I came off the track. It was running so well before. And yep, it appeared the Rapido curse had returned. The locomotive was finding fault with my switches, which again, in this case, is an Atlas switch, for those of you wondering. Not a model power, or anything else for that matter. And yet again, Saab, we can see the front truck is once again off the track. See, the front truck is clearly off and it's going to stop right there. Yep, knew it. Ugh. This is junk. Ugh, not again. Now, admittedly, I did go back and find that one of the tracks toward the other side of the layout actually had a minor bend in it, which was causing the train to derail. But as an extra precaution, I decided to move the Rapido Alco PA to the third track, along with its train, to see if this made a difference. And as you can see, I have sort of a Sam's Trains, if you will, operating session set up. On the outer track, I have an Atherin Alco PA, which needs no introduction. It's the same one that is actually the logo to my channel. But again, a short string of Atherin Blue Box coaches. On the second track, in place of the Rapido Alco PA, I have the Walters number 17 Alco PA, pulling yet another string of Atherin Blue Box coaches. And finally, last and hopefully not least, on the third track, I have the Rapido Alco PA, pulling a small s string of yet again more Atherin Blue Box coaches. These are again the Heritage Amtrak coaches using the Heritage 1 paint scheme.
For a while, it looked like I nicked the problem in the butt, it simply being that little bent track, which didn't affect most of my other engines, just this particular PA, and if I admit the Walters gave me a little trouble on it too. With this in mind, I decided it was time for another test, in this case up the mountain, to see how the Rapido Alco PA would deal with the tight turns, as well as the grade of that particular branch. Once again, I foolishly thought this test was going to go very well, at least at this point. But then... Drop it. Stalled again? What the hell? Up again, come on. Oh. Nice and slow. See if she can make it up without derailing or anything. Okay, looks good. Looking real good now, it derailed again. Oh, come on. All right, enough is enough. Again, piece of junk. Seriously, Rapido, seriously. You can't go through a switch without derailing. This is just ridiculous. Again, I think they would have gotten their acts together and fixed this already, but no, it's just as much of a piece of junk as the RS-11 was before I had it sent in for repairs. <sighs> oh, I tell you. Oh, it came off again. Ugh. All right, enough is enough. And indeed, I had enough of trying to get this overpriced turd up my mountain line. Just to prove I wasn't losing my mind and it wasn't my track work, I then decided to give the number 17, the Walters Alco PA run, over the same mountain branch line.
And as we can see, no drama at all. It ran just perfectly the way it was supposed to, and it cost, well, noticeably less than the Rapido model. And speaking of price, hold on to your wallets, because as typical with most Rapido locomotives, this thing ain't cheap. We're talking $335 worse before shipping and taxes for the DCC and sound equipped model. Now, admittedly, you can get that price down a little bit lower if you were to go through a retailer. Mine came from Train World and cost $279.99 plus shipping and taxes, working out to about $318.58, all shipped, signed, sealed, and delivered to me. Overall, I'm once again very heavily disappointed with this particular locomotive. It's lighter than the Walters model, which is cheaper, running just over $200, $219.98 to be precise, with DCC and sound again on the Walters model for the same equipment. Its detail parts are in place, but they feel rather fragile and frail. It just doesn't really impress me, if I'm honest. And yes, 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 it does have all the fancy gimmicks and doodads and doohickeys, and it really needs to have them for that price. But when it comes down to it, what good is a locomotive that can't actually make it around a layout without derailing and and or threatening to fall into a million different pieces. I thought Rapido had finally gotten control of its quality control issues, some of which which I'll be revealing and hopefully by this point have, as I'm re releasing and or have released at the time this video is being published, an update on the Rapido RS-11s I had so much trouble with, which came back with quite a few surprises from Rapido. See the video to see more about what happened there. Bottom line, though, it appears that Rapido still has not quite gotten a control on those gremlins, and this particular locomotive suffers from the same issues they did, derailing at every possible switch, turn, or everything else. Bottom line, I wouldn't recommend this locomotive, especially for the insane price. You're better off getting the Walters model, which I believe the 219.98 has gone up at the time, at this time to a higher price due to inflation. It's still, in my opinion, more well worth it, as it weighs m more, tracks better, and while it doesn't have all the detailed parts, in my opinion, that makes it easier to deal with, as you don't have to worry about snapping something off when you pick it up the wrong way. 